So now it is official. I think I won't exaggerate if I tell that one of the least decluttered and most loved palettes in the beauty community, Natasha Denona Gold Palette, is gone. Instead, we have a new revamp version, Golden Palette. Actually, I never had the original one, but so many YouTubers raved how good this palette is, especially the shades Kava, Varies, and Alchemist, which I believe all of them Natasha Denona left in the revamp version. So, is it time to get a new version? Hi, welcome to the art, a place where we try to dupe, compare, and search for similar shades in order to figure out if this palette is worth a splurge. Based on the video and photo swatches and descriptions, I'll try to dupe the color and textures using what I have. And also, in her Instagram stories, she did a great close-up of swatches, so I will use my notes from there as reference as well. Here you have all the swatches from the Natasha Denona website. And in this box, I will collect all the shades that I will consider to be similar to the gold palette. Let's get started. We have Mliko. It is a new shade, matte green powder of white. On Instagram, it looked like it was a little bit of ivory matte. I do have one off-white shade. It is in my ABH palette. This is Tempera from ABH Modern Renaissance. It does have a little bit of ivory sheen, but unfortunately it is satin. I do have several true whites like Abbey in BH, Cream and Sugar in blends, but they are true whites. Maybe this one from CoverGirl? I love the shade, but it's definitely too pearlescent. What about this white from Essence That's Taupe? Maybe cream from e.l.f.? Oh, I think that's a great match, so let's pull it out. The next one is Nubia. It is sparkling, foiled, gold nude champagne. Wow, what a description! It looks a little bit like rose gold with silver sparkles. I do have some rose gold in e.l.f. It is called rose gold. But it looks a little bit too coppery. Maybe let's try something from Natasha Denona herself. I have this palette, it is Natasha Denona Mini Star and the shade Bellatrix. Oh, I think that's a pretty close match. And if I want to get some sparkles, actually, I can get the shade Slated from Colourpop's That's Taupe. pretty close. So I will add Bellatrix from Mini Star. I wish I could depot this palette, but it's not as easy. And top it with Slated. One more new shade is Panna. It is matte green powder beige. My best beiges are in Colourpop. Let's have a look at Boa from Colourpop's That's Taupe. I think that's a little bit too pink. Maybe Batha tracks from The Mandalorian? Unfortunately, it is too peachy. It looks like I need something in between these two. Maybe once again something from Essence? Oh, I think that one should work. Let's go with I Feel Good from Essence That's Taupe. And unfortunately, this one is also not depotted. Area. This is the first shade that we came across that comes from the original palette. It is matte, medium, light, dusty scent. In the promo pictures, I saw that one as the one having a little bit of reddish undertones, but once again, it is based on the promo materials. 
Unfortunately, I have already decluttered this red brown, so hopefully the combination of other colors might work. My only kind of reds are in a soft glam. At least, I think so. Oh, that's way too dark. This one should be pretty close. So far, it will work. I think the mixture of burnt orange and sienna will work as a substitute. Fizzy is also a new shade, sparkling, wet effect golden nude. We've already had a golden nude. Oh yeah, it was in Nubia. The only eyeshadow from my collection that I know has this wet effect is Essence Home. So, what I'm planning to do is to take Bellatrix and top it with the Essence Home. And that is my version of Fizzy. Moving on to varies. The uniqueness of this shade is that it is a cold brass base with warmer sheen. It is described as metallic medium antique brass. I have very few brass shades and they are the following. This one from Pat McGrath, though it looks like it's a little bit too red. Illicit from Pat McGrath Eye Ecstasy Sublime. Oh, maybe that one would work. And here we have even more of Pat McGrath. This one definitely has a lot of that cold brass base. Let's do some small experiment. Still not the same. Yep, I think I finally got it. So my varies is Lazarus topped with Flame Fatale. Moving on to Aura, a new shade that is metallic golden ivory. What golden ivory actually is? Surprisingly, I see that I don't have the shade that is similar to this one, and I'm not sure what to mix. Hmm, I think I have an idea. This is Lit from Morphe palette of highlighters. I think if I get some white underneath, it should work. I would say it is pretty close. Though from this angle, it looks a little bit too yellow. Maybe if I mix these two. What do you think? Can I call this one a metallic ivory? It seems to me that I will go with Cosmic Champagne from Pat's palette. Teak also comes from the original palette. It is a matte medium dusty caramel. That one I know is Sienna from Soft Glam. That was fast. Kava, the shade that majority of people buy the whole palette for. To me, it looks like cold gold with silver sparkles. Once again, Space Cowboy from Urban Decay comes into my head. I know Moira has similar shade and of course Ritz from Colourpop is a popular shade. Actually slated from Colourpop's that stop can be a great dupe. Here is the base and the topper. If you are a lucky owner of the original palette, please let me know in the comment section below how actually this color combination is close to the original. Now going to sandstone. It is a matte medium ochre. Maybe Rosiana from ABH? No.
The only caramel color that I know exists in my collection is in this BH Cosmetics Romantic Nomad palette. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the name, so I will just call it a caramel. Aurum. I think all the next shades except Flash originate from Gold palette. So, Aurum is metallic muted gold. Muted gold is kind of bronze, so maybe bronze from South Glam. I think Golden Angelica is the best option I have. Once again, I use the promo materials as my guidance. The next one is Lock. It is matte dark brown. And that's definitely Depths from Blend Bunny. Moving on to Flash. Flash is a matte, light, warm nude. Warm once again. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of worms. Maybe first kiss from Blend Bunny or fluffy from Blueberry Muffin. Looks like first kiss is the closest tube. Moving on to Alchemist. It is a metallic brass. It has brassy coppery base and a sparkle silver spark. I think we can take something from Padma Grass Artistry palette or brass from Soft Glam and maybe top it with craving from Blueberry Muffin. Here are the makeup looks that I recreated by following Natasha Denona tutorials dedicated to gold palette. Originally, I intended to film this video in order to see if I need to buy this new palette or maybe I should hand down the original one. So based on my makeup preferences, the colors, the textures, drum roll. If I had the original, I think I would not get the new one. Just a small disclaimer, it is based on the online swatches, based on the videos, Instagram stories and any promo videos that Natasha Denona posted. Maybe when I see it in real life, I'll understand that those are definitely my colors and my collection will die without them. Here is shade by shade comparison of what I could find in my collection and what Natasha Denona has presented. A lot of shades are very similar, like Fizzy looks like a topper version of Nubia, Orum looks like Kava without sparkle. As for me, what was so alluring about the gold palette was the raw or greens, with those unique undertones. That palette actually gave much more variety to a look, and somehow it managed to turn very unconventional color story, very bold colors, into something you can wear daily. I really admire Natasha Denona for her color stories. Even sometimes at night I'm thinking about some of her palettes, like Yaka palette. I think eventually I'll just get it. After following her tutorials based on the golden palette, I learned great color combinations. For example, uh, topping golden shimmers with silver sparkles. They actually make your eyes twinkle. Or did you know that in order to get a perfect blend with the darker shades, what you need is a very good satin. That's all. And after that, you get a perfect blend. Eyes aside, I figured out that I have a very nice dupe for her highlighter. And I'm not wearing a blush, just a little bit of bronzer. And I love the way my face looks. And I love this highlighter, very subtle pearlescent glow. And once again, this was done due to following her tutorials or due to duping the products she was presenting in the gold collection. 
I know you might be tired of me raving about following Natasha Denona tutorials, but by following them, I learned a new lip combo. I have a brown tint and a gloss with silver sparkles, which in real life looks very, very cute. And her eye pencil, it like it is smooth as butter. I will definitely grab it during some Black Friday sales. Anyway, what are your thoughts on this collection? Is it a pass or is it a grab? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. I'll see you next time. Bye!